Welcome to a segment in file signature analysis in the digital forensic series. In this segment, we'll take a look at how to analyze files and their signatures to identify the appropriate file type that the file actually is or originally was or now has been changed to hide data. We'll assume that we're in a forensic analysis session. Your department has retrieved the criminal's machine and has done a full hard drive imaging process so that we're only working with verified copied of the files and not the originals. So the department is known to have been struggling to identify a group of files and these particular group of files have not been accessible or are showing up as corrupted files. So our job is to see if the files are actually corrupted or if the criminal has somehow modified the file types to prevent access into this data. So now remember that in a Windows operating system that I have had my view changed to showing file type file name extensions. So you can see that these are just called file one without any extensions. And in Windows OS, if a file extension is changed in any way, this will alter the file drastically. It could potentially make the file unreadable. This is because Windows OS will take into account the file extension to make the file accessible and allow it to be opened with the appropriate application depending on its extension. So if it was a .doc, it will automatically look for a word processing application. If it was a .text, it will automatically open it with text editor. Or if it was a JPEG, it will automatically open it with the image viewer or paint or any sort of imaging program. So it will categorize it in that kind of manner. Um, so when we remove or change the extension, the Windows OS will think that this file is now something entirely new. And we know for a fact that there are many file types that could be a possible solution or we could spend countless hours um, checking each different file type and trying it out. Or we could try the most common file types for a faster result. But none of these methods are still efficient enough. So what we can do is we can use file signatures, which I explained in the segment, to aid with our restoration process of the unreadable files. Um, so we'll analyze the files using hex editor and analyze the header and trailer of these files to identify what their type is. So each file will have a header and trailer, which is unique to itself and it will identify what type of file that particular file is regardless of you changing the uh, extension so if i were to say file.txt it won't matter like it will windows os will read it as a text file but other operating systems will use this particular unique header and trailer to identify what particular type this file is so we'll use that method instead um, so we've got, I've got a helpful website here. So these two, this particular website is the most helpful and this will come in handy later on. I will include a link to these in the description down below. We can use the find function of the web browser to look for the header and trailer to figure out, to figure out its uh, suitable file extension. Um, this segment will be covered in three portions. We'll cover four files each in each segment so i've got the tabs open here um, i've got the file signature tab here um, this person is called gary kessler i presume because he's the person that invented uh collected all this information of each file type and it's very helpful and that's exactly what we're going to use and we'll i also have this hxd editor i'll leave a link to this in the description below as well and it's simple and it's a windows version so i'm using this particular one so let's go ahead and open start off with the first file analysis um, so cool. so i'm just going to drag and drop so all we got to do is when i say header and trailer just the starting bytes over here and the ending bytes over here are very unique to these particular um, particular file types. So all we do is if we copy just the group of bytes that I'm highlighting over here and then we go into the website that we have, use the find function 
I'm just pressing Control F and then I'm going to paste that data that I've copied and it says no results that's completely fine just start backspacing from here until it does find results I'm cancelling out any additional headers that are invalid because a header is very unique so until it finds that particular header I'm going to keep backspacing and there we go so the first five three four five five bytes is known as a rich text format because remember when using hex editor two hexadecimal uh, digits considered uh, are considered one byte so I'm using the first five bytes and this is saying this is a rich text format word processing file and the trailer is a 7d so if we go back to our hex editor the trailer is 7d over there um, generally it's near the end but um i guess there's additional data over there which is unique to the um, unique to the file attributes and whatnot itself so that's fine at least we found the trailer so what we'll now do is we're gonna copy this particular file and we will paste it's in the outputs I've created a new folder just for convenience sake um, and I'm gonna name it RTF a rich text format and it's automatically associated now with the word document so what I will do is I will actually open it with um, WordPad as well as Microsoft Word just to see if um, if there's any difference in formatting if there's any difference in keys or text or anything like that that I might pick up so I'm just gonna drag and drop that file in and you can see that it's opened up some sort of uh, some sort of text so I'm just gonna so dragging and dropping it didn't work um, so I'm just gonna browse desktop outputs press file okay so that is showing up as the exact same um, exact same tick so what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna highlight everything and just change the text color just to see if there's any other hidden data and it's only highlighted two lines so I'm presuming that there's that there's no other information and that's the only bit of information that it has so that's what's contained within that text and we can actually see this I think I've noticed this here we can actually see the same text just over here um, just there so if we were to highlight all of this copy it try to find it over here it says can't find but um if you just use this text box to match the contents ai49 dash t l j g or j q a3 s v b 4t yeah that does match so data seems to be correct and it is in fact a very small file it's a one kilobyte file so I'm happy with the analysis of that and I can certainly say that that will be the only content as far as what I what my analysis shows so we'll move on to the next file now and we're gonna drag and drop the file to cool and again we are gonna take the first few bytes and some just remember some there is a fine line between choosing too little bytes and choosing too many bytes but it's up to you I mean I don't I would say the more the better and because some file signatures can be that long which I've seen just from experience so I guess we'll take that much and then I'm going to paste it into my find function and then I'm just going to start backspacing just like how I did before just until one of the file signatures matches so one two three four five six the sixth byte one two three four five six is a 20 so all six um, bytes match and this is identifying as a EML 
which is a common file extension for email files. Signatures are shown here for Netscape, Eudora, and generic signatures, respectfully. respectively. Um, email is also used by Outlook and QuickMail. I think I have Outlook installed. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and rename this file to email. And see if uh, Outlook opens it. Right now, it's by default. It's opening it with Mail. We don't want that. We want it to open it with Outlook. So it's got attachments and it's got a lot of DAT files. So it's got a PNG and JPEGs. It's got GIFs as well. Oh, did it open? Um, no. So it's not being able to read any of these. Oh, there you go. That read. So it's reading it at the bottom, I believe. So couldn't open any of these. Just remember, EML is a file format developed by Microsoft, I believe. Um, it's for Outlook Express. Um, it preserves the original HTML formatting and headers, and it supports, and it is supported by most uh, mail clients. So you can try and open it with open this with multiple mail mail clients just to see if there any differentiation. Um, some clients won't open them straight away because I know that the mail app, the new Windows. 10 mail app you kind of have to make an account and add it to your inbox or something to open it It doesn't open standalone on the side so that's why I, I used um, Outlook but um, we're not getting any of this and I also have a free EML viewer and I just want to show you guys what this will look like by opening it with that because we didn't find any great um, results by opening it with um, Outlook anyway. So, navigating to where it's stored. And it's showing the attachments again. That's the hex view. So it's saying the date when it was received was 7th of the 7th, 2012 at 3.32 a.m. And we can see that there's data here. This is uh, data that we could precisely use in the forensic investigation that we're undergoing right now. And we could um, relate this information back to our investigators and say, hey, look, this is what we found. And the subject was Blackboard Learn. You know, all this information is definitely evidence towards our case. But if we could get more solid information, that'll be that'll be a lot better. But um, this even this one's not showing too much. There's another method to open EML files. So EML, um, they retain the HTML HTML format headers and you know they do retain some of those elements. So what we can do is there is an old, they're very similar to MHTML files. And if you don't have success opening it with the EML or any sort of mail apps, MHT, that's what it's called. But if you notice a type, the extension is MHT, but the type would become MHTML document. And these open with Internet Explorer very well. This is a old format but it could potentially work sometimes so we're opening it and let's see what this brings up because um, we didn't have any luck with the outlook and I used a dedicated um, EML viewer and even that one didn't have much luck it just kind of showed what the contents of it was but um, the MHTM seems to work and it's still not showing any of the pictures I think maybe these were the GIFs and the JPEGs, just the outline, and maybe this. 
but um and if you notice the dat files as well which kind of gave it away that it was some sort of a database file it was a database um a session file because normally emails could contain dats dot dat extension files but not as many as that one particular And again, Internet Explorer opens these ones the best. It seems to not show any more than this. So that's what this file contained. And you'd make note of that. Cool. And then we'll move on to... Move on to... Um, so we can just see just from the hex editor over here that it says doc type um, HTML but I'll still still um, conduct my regular search just to rule out any other any other um, file type association So this is Mozilla Mail Summary File, MSF Thunderbird Mozilla Mail Summary File, but it's in the, uh, it's, it's in the, it's in the middle, oh there you go, so this is at the very beginning, so there's two there, and this is again showing the exact same uh, description as what I saw there. Um, lesser than exclamation doc type HTML and this is saying uh, AOL HTML mail file apparently it's a mail file though so don't know I've never seen a DCI extension so we can we can try a DCI and then I'll also try the um, just a normal HTML file because I don't have a application associated to open DCI files on the SAR operating system. So I'll open the HTML file first. Okay, so we can see that this is just a basic website. Um, allow block content. Apparently, some of the ActiveX controls are blocked. I'm going to allow it just for investigation purposes. And this is a um, closed environment anyway. This is a virtual machine, so I'm, it's completely fine. It won't get affected in any sort of way. And I've made snapshots, so that way, even if it does get affected, I could just go back. So, this seems to be a digital forensics website, and there seems to be nothing, nothing more than what meets the eye. So everything is given to us. Um, everything presented as being highlighted. And I guess you'd, you'd analyze this a little bit more, whereas right now I'm skimming over it for the convenience of the video. Um, a DCI file. I still don't know what a DCI file is. I'm just going to try opening it with um, <laughs> opening it with Internet Explorer. Let's see what happens. Nah, it's still the same thing. So it didn't uh, reconstruct anything different. It's still the same construction. So I would say just leave it as HTML. DTDX HTML version 1.1. Okay, so I'll just say that it's the HTML file, and that's quite a bit of information contained in that file anyway. So, our analysis was quite successful. So, moving on to the fourth file. Um, This one luckily has no other data after after the header, so that's all the header information is. So let's see what we find. We find an exact match, and this is apparently many different file formats, but um, it's a compound file, file format known as compound binary file format by Microsoft. So I can see it's familiar extensions here doc is word document or any sort of word processor ppt is a powerpoint xls is a spreadsheet 
So what I'll do is I'm going to copy three. I'm going to use those three just for convenience. And what I will do is I will rename this particular, make three copies of this particular file. And I'm going to rename each one dot doc the respective formats in each um, Microsoft Office uh, application and see what we open. So apparently it's not an Excel spreadsheet. Oh, there you go. Word found something. Microsoft Word found that as text and there's no other text on the page. And I'll confirm that by highlighting and changing the font. And so did PowerPoint. And it seems like it found the uh, same, the same uh, text. And I've highlighted everything, changed the font to red to see if there's any changes. And the numbers do seem the same. Just the container with being a PowerPoint and a Word document changed, that's all. So that's what's contained within that file. And just double check the size of the file. It says 22 kilobytes. I mean, if you look at a first document, it was, an, it was a rich text format document that contained the same amount of text as this, to be honest, like maybe a little bit less, whereas that one was only one document, and this is 22. So I'm thinking because this was a container, it's got more metadata about the, um, about the file. So, so this again, last modified was 6 to the 7, 2012 at 10 a.m., Total editing time was one minute. Pages, words, one word, one page, 22 kilobytes. And you can see the author there is uh, Jonathan, I think that's a LAM. I don't know if it's a capital I, capital, uh, just a lowercase L. But because everything else is lowercase, I would just, just say it was a lowercase. So Jonathan LAM and Seems to be no other, no other information. Show all properties. And it says company JPMIS. So it's got other unique attributes. So things like this where you can um, get this information, extract this information from files such as this one is quite important in a analysis because you can use this to add your, um, to add your case. So that brings us to the end of the segment and I hope you're being able to follow along to see how the analysis is taking place and I also hope that I'm explaining everything as I go and I'm not missing anything out. Uh, please like this video and subscribe to my channel to be updated about more videos such as these. And comment if you have any opinions or questions and either me or the community will um, aid you with your request. Because I'm sure there's someone out there who, who, who can um, explain. And if you guys have any requests, let me know because I will, um, I will do those uh, as a video as well. The explanation of those if I, if I have experience handling those kinds of requests. And I'll include all the links in the description down below. Um, of this, uh, this particular website and the free applications that I've used, the HXD and also the free email viewer. And I'll see you in the next segments of the Digital Forensics file signature analysis.